Hello, welcome back Team Fragmental. Thank you for joining me. It's Wishlist 2022 time. I don't know why I'm banging on the table when I say that. To make a point, it's an important video. This is where I make a video about all the fragrances I want to buy next year and then don't actually buy any of them. So if you want to see which fragrances are in my mind that I'd like to buy next year, stay tuned. So if you saw the video I did recently where I went back over my 2021 wish list to see which fragrances I purchased, you will know that, that I sucked. I pretty much sucked. I, I didn't buy many off the list. Just, just one or two. One and a half. Let's say one and a half. Uh, if you don't know what I mean, go back and watch that video. Despite not doing very well on last year's wish list, I still wanted to do this 2022 wish list because it's still fun. It's fun to see if I do actually buy anything. And it's a chance for me to redeem myself to see if I can do better this year and buy more fragrances off my wish list. So let me tell you which fragrances are tempting me that I would like to pick up over the next 12 months. Now last year, on last year's list, there was a Parfum de Mali fragrance, Pegasus Exclusive. I did not buy that fragrance. Maybe I will at some point, but there's another one that has also got my attention. This is Haltain. It is a Harrods exclusive. I'm gonna put the bottle up there so you can see how gorgeous that green and gold bottle looks. Very Harrods, makes it even more exclusive and desirable. It's a woody EDP. There's saffron, cedarwood, praline, elderwood, bergamot, lavender, and clary sage. So it's gonna be a little bit aromatic with the lavender and the sage and the bergamot. So I think it will be quite bright in the opening, but then we've got the praline underneath that, which to me, means that this fragrance is going to be aromatic but creamy and rich and that's something that Parfum de Mali do really well. It's a pretty penny as you would expect from a Harrods exclusive so I will either have to be a very good boy and put it on my Christmas list and hope that Santa brings it for me or I will have to save up some pennies and, and go into Harrods and buy it for myself. I should probably smell it first because this would be a blind buy. Probably shouldn't blind buy something at that price. So hopefully at some point I can go to London, I can go into Harrods, I can smell it, and if I like it and I've got the money, I can buy it. So there's a lot of things that have to happen really first before I can justify buying this fragrance, but I reckon I like it. So watch this space. Hopefully at some point, Haltain from Parfum de Mali will be added to my collection. Tobacco, love it. Not to smoke, I'm not a smoker. Never will be, but I do like the smell of it, especially certain types of tobacco. I would say it's my favourite note in fragrances. I don't know why, there's just something about tobacco fragrances that really vibe with me. I can't really put my finger on it. Maybe it's associations with smelling my granddad's pipe tobacco. Could be something like that. There is a new fragrance, a new tobacco fragrance on the market from a house that I love. It's Saharoff's Tobacco. I have not smelled this yet. I'm hoping that at some point, maybe even by the time you're watching this video, maybe not, um, I'm hoping that we will be stocking that on Lux Parfum because we are stocking the rest of the Zaharoff fragrances. We're just going to figure out some shipping things. I can't wait to smell it. I've heard that it is the sort of scent profile along the lines of Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille, so that sweet vanillary tobacco type of fragrance, but even more so like Faden's Tobacco Rouge. Someone said it's it's closer to that, which to me is more honey. It gets its sweetness more from the honey rather than the vanilla. And that is a, a more dialed back fragrance than Tobacco Vanille. I love it, but it is quite a loud fragrance, bit of a room filler. If you want something a little more subdued, a little more dialed back, uh, then I think Faden's Tabac Rouge is definitely one to look at. By the sounds of things, Zaharoff Tabac is going to be along the same lines. I don't know how close it is to either of those fragrances. There's a few that have that, that profile. I really love Frank Bucklet's Tobacco. That is a gorgeous fragrance. So I'm really looking forward to the Zaharoff because it's a scent profile that I know from other fragrances in that genre that I really, really love. So I cannot wait to get my nose on that. I know a lot of people in the States have smelled it, even some people here in the UK. Nigel from Two Cents Worth, he was wafting a bottle in front of my nose the other day, knowing I didn't have one. Bastard. Uh, but he was saying that he enjoys it and many are saying that they enjoy it. I think it will probably be my favorite of the Zaharoff line because it's got that note of tobacco. So cannot wait to smell that and hopefully that will be in my collection at some point over the next few months. 
Eben Fumé is the latest Tom Ford private blend release. It's in the slightly lower price bracket of private blend as opposed to the higher bracket. That's the opposite, isn't it? Uh, but this is still £178 for 50 ml. So it's not a cheap fragrance, niche prices. Some people would say private blend is niche. Uh, let's have that argument. Put down in the comments, is Tom Ford private blend niche or designer? It's not like we've never had that argument before, but feel free if you want to chip in with that. So Eben Fumé, I've smelled it. This would not be a blind buy. I smelled it in Harvey Nichols and I really enjoyed it. It's like this smoky, woody, incensey fragrance. It reminded me of the discontinued Tom Ford Sahara Noir. My friend's got a couple of bottles of that. I've had a small sample of that. It wears really well on me. I love the profile. It is discontinued, so you cannot buy it anymore unless you're happy to pay silly prices on eBay. I'm not that prepared to pay silly prices for it, even though it's a beautiful fragrance. I, there's just something about people selling fragrances, discontinued fragrances for double, triple the cost. It just oh, gets in my wick a little bit. So I kind of can't bring myself to, to spend silly amounts of money on discontinued fragrances. So I'm pleased that Eben Fumé is similar to that because I can pay full retail and I'm still probably paying less than a bottle of Sahara Noir. I think I will pick up Eben Fumé at some point because I love it. I got great performance off the small little bit I wore on my hands. So if I've got it fully sprayed on, I think it's gonna work really well. Love the bottle, love the smell. That is on my wish list for next year. I have next to me here a little travel sprayer with very potent juice in it. This is Interlude Man 53 from Armouage. I love the original Interlude Man. Some people say it's a little bold, it's a bit too bold and complex. I, I've never had a, a problem with it. I, I've always thought it's a, a fragrance that is relatively easy uh, for me to wear. I guess, you know, you get used to more complex fragrances. So this is Interlude Man 53 because it is 53% perfume oil as opposed to the EDP of the original which will be something more like 25% so it's probably more than double the amount of perfume oil so you would think that Interlude Man 53 would be a nuclear bomb in a bottle or a travel sprayer well it's kind of not really it's a little more understated it's a bit more dialed back it's not as loud it's not as much of a room fill it's still kind of a room fill but just not quite as much and it just seems to soften the edges of Interlude Man a little bit. So it does smell very similar, maybe projects a little bit less, but it will last on the skin for hours and hours because of that high oil concentration. So I've really been enjoying this. I'm probably gonna run this down quite fast out of this travel sprayer. So I would not mind having a bottle of Interlude 53. I don't have Interlude Man, I've got Black Iris, but I don't have Interlude Man. I would be very happy to have Interlude 53. I'm not Interlude Man because I think I would probably wear 53 more often. So it's on the wish list. Let's look at what is next. Going back to tobacco here. And I smelt this earlier in the year and I kind of knew before I smelled it that I would probably like it. And I was right. It is Tobacola from Dior. Tobac tobacola? Tobacco color? Tobacola? Tobacola? Tobacco -ola? Something like that. Yeah, I smelled it in store and uh, it's a, a sweet, fruity tobacco fragrance. Fruit and tobacco and sweetness always go really well. Doesn't smell quite like any other tobacco fragrances that I own, so I think it would sit quite nicely in my collection. It's not cheap. For me, it's a pretty wearable fragrance. I can see myself wearing it casually, formally. Probably could even wear it spring autumn, winter, so I think I would get quite a lot of wear out of it. I had it on a, a, a strip, a card, and uh, I feel like it would be quite a good performer as well. I didn't unfortunately get it on skin, but I've got the feeling that it's quite a full fragrance, so I think the performance of that would be really good. So yeah, very likeable, fruity tobacco fragrance that, uh, that I wouldn't mind. Looking down the list, we're going on to the last one here, and it's tobacco again, and we're talking about discontinued Tom Ford fragrances. Tobacco Oud, as far as I can see, is not discontinued. We, we thought it might be, but I've seen it still for sale, uh, new. So uh, I think the rumors of that for the moment seem to be incorrect because it's, it's out there, uh, certainly in the UK anyway, I'm not sure about the States. Now, Tobacco Oud Intense, I have a decant of, 
and I really enjoy it. I like it. I just felt the original tobacco oud was just a little smoother, so maybe a little more wearable. But the perfume parlor version of the original, what am I talking about? Tobacco oud, that's the one. I'm talking about too many tobacco fragrances today. The perfume parlor version I felt was a little lighter and a little easier to wear. It just softened the edges. It wasn't as bold as the Tom Ford, but I thought it was a really nice alternative. So for a clone, for an inspiration, I thought it was a really good option. I go and do voiceovers from time to time. And one of the guys that works in the voiceover place loves his fragrances. Um, I actually introduced him to Perfume Parlor and uh, he, he loves a good Perfume Parlor now. And I was there the other day and I could smell him even before I saw him. I, I was walking down the corridors and I was getting the, the sillage and then he was setting up the microphone and um, I was just saying, oh, it smells really, really good. What is it you're wearing? It smelled familiar, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. And he said, Tobacco Oud Intense from Perfume Parlor. Theirs is called Woodleaf 2. It smelled great. I said, I've, I've got to pick that up, especially because Tobacco Oud Intense, I think is discontinued so I can't buy that and, and it's pretty pricey anyway this is one I, I definitely know I'm gonna buy this because it's not that expensive perfume pal is really cheap I'm thinking of treating myself because perfume pal now offer extra versions of all their fragrances so they've got high concentration of oils and they put other things in there to make it more of a statement making fragrance it certainly smelled amazing to me when I was smelling the other guys uh, scent bubble and sillage. The 30 mil of the extra is 20 quid. So I think I'll probably go for that one. If I get that, I'll do a comparison video because I've got my decant of Tobacco Oud Intense. So look out for that in the future. That is the last one on my wish list. Uh, a few tobaccos on there, no surprise there. Let's hope I can do a better job of picking the things up on this wish list than I did on the last one. Let me know what you would like to buy in 2022. What's coming up? I was having a little look and it doesn't seem to be, certainly listed as far as I could see, it doesn't seem to be any massively exciting new releases coming in 2022. But if you've got your eyes on something, if you know of a brand and one of your favorite brands that's coming out with a new fragrance, let me know because it could be news to me. Yeah, just let me know what you're thinking of buying in 2022. And let's see if this time next year, we have all fulfilled our fragrance wish list. That's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a like and maybe even subscribe. And if you do, I will see you in the next one. Bye.